So tonight I'm introducing a friend from Mexico City. The first time I met him, I thought I should work for him because his office is so cool. And then I walked around the whole establishment, then I thought maybe I could also start my own office there and rent a space. <laughs> so I'm still hovering between the two, whether I should work for Abel or whether I should get an office there or move to Mexico City altogether, right? It's the most amazing city. So tonight we'll welcome our guest, Productora, a great office in Mexico City, uh, Abel Palace. Um, we like to welcome you here in uh, the University of Pennsylvania Weizmann School of Design. Abel is, it lives in Mexico, but is actually Argentinian and um, finished his studies in Buenos Aires uh, in 1999, I think, yeah. Uh, and is current, was teaching in IIT in Chicago for a few years and currently is teaching the housing studio in Mexico City uh, at the Centro de Diseño. Uh, he's been doing that from 2019 and is still teaching that. So uh, I said to him, it's quite interesting that exactly today we have the pin-up of our housing studio uh, where we'll have a drink later. Uh, we met Abel when we were last spring with our students. Richard and I teach a studio in spring. We were in Mexico City and Pilar, um, one of the people who used to actually work for me, uh, was teaching both in the two, two universities, Anwak and Ibero, and um, said, you have to meet these people. They have the most amazing place in the middle of Mexico City, and arranged for us to meet Abel and his uh, three partners. There are four partners in total. But what really amazed me, it wasn't just an architecture studio. They also have uh, something they call a space for architecture, uh, which is a platform that promotes emerging Latin American architecture through exhibitions, conferences, and workshops. Um, and basically, what I loved was I was looking at the space. So I told you it's an old factory, and Arc Daily wrote about their 50-meter-long translucent roof. Um, that they, they really appreciated that it basically formed an amazing alternative to demolishing historic but often not registered buildings in Mexico City. This project shows how valuable structures can be reused, adapted in an intelligent way when the financing for a full-scale restoration is not or not yet available. It explores the aesthetic quality of the building as found and enhances that experience by contrasting it with contemporary intervention. So the 50 meter long roof on like a sort of a space truss. Maybe we'll show that today. Um, love that. Plus they make coffee and chocolate and amazing food and you know, a few other things we all like. Um, so Abel is what I said, one of the four partners of Productora. Uh, they founded the studio in 2006, and the studio's work is distinguished by an interest in distinct geometries, the production of clearly legible uh, projects with limited gestures, and the search for a timeless building. The studio has developed a wide variety of designs in Mexico and abroad, from residential projects to public buildings and corporate spaces. They have been awarded by the Architecture League of New York with the Young Architects Forum in 2007, Emerging Voices in 2013. We all went through these, I, like as a group, I think. Um, uh, and the work has been presented in the Architecture Biennale of Venice in 2008, 12, and 18. 2018 and in the Chicago Architecture Biennale uh, 2015 and 17. It has been featured in the Victorian Albert Museum in London, which is amazing, in 2009, and the National Art Museum of China in Beijing in 2015 and 17. Among the many publications of the office, their first feature by Arquina, it's an incredible uh, Mexican uh, magazine, 2010, and their issue of 20 architecture uh, of 20, Oh no, the 2G, sorry, my eyes are getting really bad. 2G <laughs> Architecture Magazine, 2014 standout. But of course, their own book, Being the Mountain, was the result of research initiated after winning the Mies van der Rohe uh, uh, America's Prize for Emerging Practices at IIT Chicago. 
They have had also an amazing, currently an amazing exhibit in 2022 in the Museography at Laboratorio de Arte Alameda, Mexico City exhibit, um, which, which had a beautiful name, The Summer That Never Was, in Spanish, I think I'll let Eduardo pronounce that, um, opened um, current, just in March, I think, right? March, you said, yeah. It was curated by Ruth Estaves, which is actually their partner in the, the branch that deals with uh, the art exhibits and the whole other uh, thing they do with uh, young artists. Uh, she is an amazing um, uh, curator. So funny story about their office is there is one, one Argentinian, two Mexicans, and a Belgian. And then we have the curator attached to the Mexican. Spanish curator attached who does the, so it's like a mini uh, United Nations over there. Um, so yeah, the proposal reinterprets the white buttresses of the Alameda Art Library Laboratory by um, generating a series of empty walls made of standard blue cabinets. These new walls define roots and rooms and provide shelves to accommodate the audiovisual equipment that shows 19 video works from the film archive of the CIAC collection. For his talk, uh, Abel will present a series of detours where he will demonstrate, and I quote, how their architecture established a fruitful clash between our personal interests, our own stubborn will, and the will of the assignment. This is the, late, the latent possibilities embedded into the site, context, program, budget, and client, etc. I like the stubborn will part, so I'm very curious. Please help me welcome Abel Palace from Productora. Thank you, Winka. Yeah, you told all my lecture. <laughs> and um, I'm really happy to be here. Thank you for having me um, to, to start. Um, as a starting point, our architecture always tries to summarize into one single gesture. One simple set of rules that can orchestrate a building. In contrast to many contemporary practices, these rules of operation are not directly based on program, research, or external references, but rather developed through formal spatial of tectonic investigations. This is through the architectural object itself. The main goal in our architecture is to establish a fruitful clash between our personal interests and our own stubborn will and the will of the assignment. This is the Latin possibilities embedded into the site, context, program, budget, client, and the like. Only when we can establish here an intense and meaningful relationship of conflict, then a new, unknown, and surprising set of architectonic axioms can arise. Since we believe that the key to resolving a problem cannot be found within the material of the puzzle itself, we use our own interests and playful tryouts as a trick to focus on something completely outside the real problem. And so, through a detour, to come up with a fresh and powerful solution to the problem also maybe not always the most logical one. In this way, the concept or the key idea of a project will not be that magic trick. That resolves all design challenges, organizes program, and defines forms. No, on the contrary, it is that disturbing decision that carefully taken after a slow process of tryouts and eliminations of options will put you in danger, make you committed to the project, and will demand new solutions from you. It will ask you to rethink your architectural vocabulary, technical solutions, and programmatic organizations. 
it is interesting to see that when these initial decisions are well made, the project almost evolves by its own inertia. No extra theories, concepts, or definitions seem necessary when this initial class between the intention and the site has been made successfully. At a certain moment in the process, as architects, we behold how the internal architectonical logic latently present in the design challenge starts to float above, becomes visible to our eyes and seemingly independent from our will. New and unexpected principles of internal coherence will start to define the project. Um, to, start, to start with, here we have one of our detours, a house in San Luis. This house forms part of a larger master plan for a new neighborhood in San Luis, Missouri. A large section of that master plan was designed by the Mexican architect Tatiana Bilbao and consists of 17 loosely arranged single family dwellings designed by four different architectural offices. An ensemble of sturdy bricks volumes that, that mimic the historic architecture of the environment. Together, they form a family of mega bricks, a composition of robust elements interwoven with gardens, plazas, pedestrian walkways, and shared spaces. Conceived a prototype for possible further iterations, we designed a house that would be as flexible and adaptable as possible. We place all service spaces, such as bathrooms, kitchens, storage, and access to the basement in the middle of the house, leaving a larger open space at the perimeter. Simply by adding or removing partitions, the project can be transformed into many different plan configurations, many different plan configurations to accommodate different needs or family situations. The central service areas, commonly regarded as secondary spaces without direct access to facades for light and ventilation, are interconnected by windows, which creates a kaleidoscopic transparency that allows daylight to enter deep into the center of the dwelling. Light coming in. Four of uh, Productora's houses were built as part of the master plan. The daylight uh, coming from the top. The house allows, allows you to accommodate it according to your needs. Um, the next project is housing two here in, uh, in America too. This experimental project is located in the first belt of low density neighborhoods surrounding downtown Denver at only two miles of the city center. It uh, provides centrally located low-cost housing for individuals or couples while integrating within the morphology of the suburban environment. According to local zoning codes, we could build a main house and an accessory dwelling unit, ADU, on each lot. The site consists of a 50-foot-wide parcel divided into two equal lots. By organizing each front house into three studios, each with its own bathroom and kitchenette and a large communal living space. We managed to have six units in total, four studios in the front houses, and two split-level artist studio in the ADUs towards the Ailey. 
The project acknowledges how larger single family residents in well located neighborhood are frequently shared by roommates and friends and was designed to cater to those needs. Integrating shared kitchen and living room, laundry areas have powder room and pipe outdoor areas. The project stage the project stage a subtle balance between the need for privacy and the possibility of social interaction. The upper floor studios take advantage of the pitched roof volume, creating high ceiling living areas and sleeping mezzanine accessible by ladder. The split level ADUs receive a roll up garage door, creating a workshop like atmosphere and a direct connection with the outdoors during the warm summer, during the warm summer months. This project was built with a very limited budget using economical construction materials and standard solutions. The pitched roof volumes are clad with a standing seam metal roof in a standard blue color and a board and batten facade with different vertical intervals and tones of blue to make recognizable elements. Even within the restricted budget and buildable volume, the architecture has a generous and spacious feel. Um, this project uh, is called Manuel Dublan, it's an apartment building uh, in Mexico City with uh, commercial space on the ground floor in a 20th century house. Inserted within an above patio house, the, pl the plan layout of the original house is its central staircase, high ceilings, and the original blue details in columns and decorative friezes were used as a starting point for the adaptive reuse project. Our design strategy was to preserve the existing house, newly added floors are placed inwards, relationship created between the contemporary and the historical, the original staircase of the courtyard is preserved, the transition level connects the two systems by an interior staircase. The staircase of the new volume rises above the floor. And the existing two-story houses was fully rehabilitated. Restored and repurposed as apartments that enjoy generous floor to ceiling height. The project integrates 70 new house units in a unique and sensitive way into the existing context, contributing to densification and revitalization of an undervalued neighborhood in Mexico City. Above the historic facade, the newly added floors are placed inwards to generate a friendly urban scale at the street level to establish a respectful dialogue between the original house and the new building, and to create large protected terraces. The original staircase connects these first two levels. The upper floors are connected by a new sculptural staircase that uh, floats over the central courtyard. Um, the next project is a, is a public project that we made in 2014 in Mexico City. Uh, the architectonical, um, the, the Pavilion of the Culture of, of First 2014 addresses the um, migration that have influenced the development of Mexico City. 
the architectonical expression of this migration flows is represented through a large boardwalk. That brings visitors up to a balcony overlooking the main square, the Zócalo, and that comes down again to stage a symbolical arrival to the center of the city. This game of straight and curved ramps, balconies and walkways wraps around an equilateral triangle that houses a multi-use space. As a reference to the ships that brought the first migrants to Mexico, the whole pavilion is made out of wood. In a close collaboration with uh, our structural engineers and our contractor, we designed this structure so that elements could be prefabricated off-site and then assembled on the public square. In the minimum construction, time of seven working days. About the visitors' experience of the pavilion, we had to take two very different functions into account. First of all, we wanted to create a smaller and more intimate space in which people could dwell for a longer while, have a one-on-one -on -one relation to an exhibition narrative, enjoy lectures, attend cocktail parties, or music events. The interior of the triangle is therefore only open on just side to control the access and occupancy in an easy way. We wanted to create an architectural proposal that could be enjoyed by large masses without having to wait in long lines under the hot Mexican sun. We designed a route that could allow you to experience the pavilion in a different way. A long architectural promenade will take you up to an elevated boardwalk from where visitors could enjoy a different perspective of the cultural fair, the square, the cathedral, and presidential palace. As well as taking a peep into the triangular exhibition and even space from above. The formal and volumetric definition of the pavilion is thus almost a literal translation of these two different routes, experiences and time frames. The circulation narrates a story about migration and allows you both an intimate as well as quick experience for visitors. Um, Roof of Prim is another public project. It's located on the rooftop of an early 20th century palace where cultural and festive events are held in the center of Mexico City. In order to prevent the occasional rains to interrupt the activities organized in the courtyards, the owner of the property required to cover the three existing patios. Instead of making three independent interventions, we generated one single proposal, a continuous roof structure, measuring more than 50 meters in length, connecting the patios in a straight line, and generating new covered surfaces, surfaces in between the patios. The structure consists on, of 45 lightweight metal trusses, each 1.2 meters apart, dividing the weight evenly over the existing construction and accentuating rhythm and perspective along the roof. A light new structure extends along the large terrace. Lightening the weight that receives the existing construction. The triangular roof section is designed asymmetrically so that one side could incorporate a covered circulation. Light and 
industrialized synthetic materials such as the PVC deck, polycarbonate sheets or the railings, seek to reduce the weight of the construction and generate a strong contrast with the materiality of the historic building. The geometric rhythm of the structure is complemented by another series of elements, such as the planters that overflow the patios. The planters delimit the new terraces. And the light fixtures highlight the intervention in the city's skyline. As an alternative to demolishing historic buildings in Mexico City, this project shows how valuable structures can be reused and adapted in an intelligent, intelligent way. Um, Laguna. Um, this project was originated on a very specific date. September 19, 2017, when we lost our former office space um, because our deadly earthquake that shocked Mexico City. From the date onward, we moved premises several times while searching for a definitive solution. In this process, we meet a young developer the owner of an old yarn and textile factory in Mexico City Doctores neighborhood, who had always dreamed of reconverting the former industrial property into a working and production space again. After the earthquake, and with so many firms searching for a new home, we decided it was time to get down to business. And a couple of weeks later, we moved to one of the abandoned bays of the former industrial grounds. And at the same time, began the project to transform the deteriorated space into the vibrant complex that currently houses more than 25 mostly creative and productive firms, including carpentry and textile workshops, coffee brewers, and ceramic studios, among others. This reconversion was strategically designed to be implemented gradually over the course of the, the course of following decades. With firms inhabiting their spaces while the renovation work in, is still in progress. We decided to preserve the old buildings and incorporate new volumes and spaces. The project preserves the exterior facades and focuses on recovering the inner courtyards, which having accumulated a large amount of equipment, roofing and annexes lost their function and connective spaces between the different areas of the complex. This strategy is complemented by architectural interventions that not only improve the operation and distribution of horizontal and, and vertical circulation, but also motivate a, motivate a tour discovery around the whole facility. The master plan preserves the old buildings and incorporate new volumes and spaces. We recover the green color already present in the factory's abandoned old waving machines. and give continuity with their unique square ironwork design in green color to establish a chromatic identity for the Laguna. Laguna was the name of the old factory, 
Now is the name of that complex. The project incorporates a new core of vertical circulations with the main staircase and an industrial elevator. Here is our current office as a part of the complex. Um, the Houston Endowment, uh, um, in collaboration with Kevin Daly Architects from LA, we won in 2019 the competition for design a new headquarters for the philanthropic organization Houston Endowment in Texas. Located near downtown in Spots Park, the building's design and programming are strongly connected to the site. The proposal consists in reconnect the existing park with the new building, giving a formal continuity between the existing trees of the park and the new building. Influenced by the organization's mission of community enrichment through empowering a stronger and healthier Houston. The program consists of offices spaces, including large multi-use event, admitting spaces on the ground floor, a mix of enclosed and open workspaces to, for staff and flexible conference rooms. A hybrid structural system com composed of steel framing and cross laminated timber provides the building with a flexible and efficient framework with which to freely organize operations. An energy generating canopy structure evokes the surrounding tree canopy and foliage. As an intricate lattice provides some control to the interiors and open terraces. The building construction was finished some weeks ago. These images are from uh, last time of the construction. We are waiting for the final images uh, of the finished building. Um, this is other uh, public project too that we made in Mexico. It's called um, the Cult Community Cultural Center in Teotitlan del Valle. The, this community cultural center exhibits, exhibits the archaeological and textile wealth of Teotitlan del Valle. Teotitlan del Valle is a small village in the Mexican state of Oaxaca. Here, here is the Titlán del Valle. Uh, in that town lives uh, 5,000 5, people. It's a community with uh, archaeological pieces with the church in the background. Here is the church with some archaeological pieces incrustated in its facade. The pre-Hispanic pieces merged merge in the church wall done by the people of the town. There is the main square of the town with the municipal government building. To one side of the main square is the site of the project. That site was four meters below the level of the, piece, of the plaza with a small stream on one side. This is the sequence of the public buildings of the town with different levels and scales. The church, the municipal government building, the main plaza, and our 
site. A large public space of plaza and gardens helps to improve the pedestrian routes passing across the site and connecting with the main square, inserting the new public spaces created by the cultural center into the circuit of existing plazas that define the urban structure of the village. The principal volume facing the village square houses the museum which will host the collection and activities of the Teotitlan Museum of History. The secondary volume contains the municipal public library. The building has three levels. The entrance is on the upper level with a staircase running through the building to connect the main plaza with the garden level. In formal terms, the project is governed by the aesthetic of the immediate context, which determine the height, color, and materials used. Here we are verifying the color of the match, the concrete. The architectural volumes present austere and neutral facades. The form and material character of the building, including double slab sloping roof, concrete walls, and control openings, create a passive system that responds to the adverse climatic conditions. This basic strategy helps to regulate the temperature inside the building and provides users with a comfortable space to read a book, work, or visit the museum and uh, at the same time eliminates the need to install air conditioning system. The cultural center uses a minimal palette of locally made materials, pigmented, pig, pigmented concrete, timber, clay tiles, and bricks, in order to blend into its context. The space works for this, that space works for different uses. Entrance lobby, esplanade, and a big shade for the visitors. The staircase, it's a connection with the main public plaza, the past and the present. Here from the main plaza's view, the building perception has a control scale. You can enjoy a beautiful view from the, this, this open terrace. The interiors present a diverse range of lighting conditions and spatial qualities, like um, double height, and triple height spaces. Here, here you can present large format exhibitions. Generating different atmospheres for exhibitions and activities. Again, from the outside, we can perceive a control scale. We were looking forward for this to happen, to make an open public space for different activities. I have a, a video from this project.
And to finish this, I will show this last uh, project. It's uh, in Cuernavaca, one hour from Mexico City, that we made in collaboration with uh, the Mexican architect Isaac Broid. We won in 2014 uh, the competition to design the Teopanzolco Cultural Center in Cuernavaca. The project, the, pro the project for the new cultural center is located on a site opposite the archaeological zone of Teopanzolco, a situation that proposes two fundamental strategies. To enhance the relationship with the archaeological site and to generate a significant public space. The building is organized around two elements, a triangular building that contains the public programs, lobbies, ser services, box office, cloakroom, auditorium, and the platform surrounding that, surrounding it, that contains the operation zones, dressing rooms, storage, workshops, backstage, including a multi-purpose black box theater. The main triangular shaped roof comprise, comprises a large stepped ramp that substantially reduces the physical presence and visual impact of the new building as well as converting the roof itself into an additional open-air open auditorium, which has the archaeological site as a backdrop. The axis of uh, composition of the triangular floor plan of the entrance space was deliberately aligned with the main pyramid. The horizontal platform surrounding the triangular building serves as a viewing area for the archaeological zone and towards the city. As a result, the lobby placed exactly opposite the pyramid becomes a viewpoint and a space for meeting before or after events. A drone view of the finished building. This great triangular esplanade forms the roof of the auditorium's main hall and contains another smaller triangular esplanade that in turn forms the roof of the main lobby. and a space that establishes an ongoing dialogue with the contemporary cultural life and the presence of the past, the pre-Hispanic architecture. Here we have a view from the pyramid. From the archaeological site, the building looks merged into the pre-Hispanic context. We were, in, we were interested to generate a dialogue between the pre-Hispanic and, and contemporary architecture. The horizontal platform surrounding the triangular building serves as a viewing area for the archaeological zone and towards the city. These platforms contain contains all the backstage areas and generates a variety of exterior spaces while incorporating the existing large trees. All the existing large trees were preserved. The main entrance is walkable and of low scale. The building contains a series of patios, one of which facing the secondary entrance to the auditorium has been sunk into the ground. 
to create a small open air theater space. The interior spaces have natural ventilation. There is the secondary lobby with uh, access to the theater. And the roof of the theater works as a public space, an open auditorium. Here's the main lobby, a line facing the pyramid. The main lobby is a semi-open space with strategically located apertures permitting cross ventilation, avoiding the use of electrical air conditioning, conditioning systems. And also the main entrance to the theater. The theater has capacity for 1,000 people. And the roof sometimes works like an open theater too with um, 600 hundred chairs. With the archeological site behind. And to finish, I have the last video. And that's all. Thank you.
with the solar roof. Yeah, I can scream. Thank you. Uh, when you showed the building with the solar roof, there was a beautiful facade under there, the white uh, kind of sculpted. Corbett. What? How do you make that? The curved facade. Yeah. It's interesting. We it's aluminium curb, and uh, we knew about a factory in Mexico in Monterrey. It's Mexico close to Texas, mm -hmm. and they made a really um, complicated uh, surfaces for all the world for different uh, project projects, and um, they call kinetica. And uh, they help us to resolve that uh, surface and um, made uh, all the tests. And, but for us, it was really important to incorporate some uh, Mexican uh, manufacturing in, in this uh, American building. And they are uh, really specialists for that. Um, they, they design their own uh, machines to assemble the facades or, or the roof and works for all of architects that we, knew, we know. Uh, a lot of projects for uh, Saha Hadid and uh, Michel Rojkin too. And uh, we have that help. Did they also do the roof, the, the solar roof? Uh, yes. The, um, I don't remember the, the word, but the, yes, they designed the, the solar, no? The metal solar. part. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Any other questions? Should I sing something? <laughs> I love this microphone. Uh, just want to start by saying thank you for the presentation. It was unbelievably beautiful work. And I, it made me think of um, just a question I had about the difference between, um, say, the gesture, as you mentioned it, and the diagram. And I see, my understanding is that the diagram has, uh, is very programmatic or functional, and the gesture is something different, which I really appreciate about that. And so I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about how the, the gesture happens, where it comes from. Is there a primary protagonist that usually makes the, the gesture happen in some way, or uh, does it change from site to site or project to project? Um, we define our, the, the rules of the project and um, the diagram. And after that, we try to break that. <laughs> and there appears the, the gesture or the detour, the detour, exactly that. You have the the logical of design or the logical of the proposal. And um, for us, we say we need more poison, you know, to, to incorporate something different that uh, like the exception of that rules. I'll pass, but I think that's really, uh, it's amazing to think about. So the gesture in a way is the breaking of the initial diagram. The, Well, I, I just want to say, like, uh, you know, as Winka said, we had we had been to your 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 studio and and the, that post-industrial space that you now colonize with like-minded um, colleagues, and um, kind of seeing that and understanding that and seeing how you sort of function and and your temperament in that space, and now understanding more broadly the body of work, I, I just want to say it's it's exceptional how it all hangs together, and we don't see that very often in architects and architecture, and it's, it's admirable. So I just want to thank you for, for being here. Thank you. Okay. Um, yes, because we are four partners from different places, it's like the joke, you know, the, the Argentinian, and the Belgian and the Mexican says, or the Spanish says. Uh, we grew up in different continents, <laughs> and the study, I, was studied in Buenos Aires, uh, other partner uh, study in um, Europe, and others in, in, in Mexico. And all of us has uh, different stories 
and the experiences that we put in the same table, you know, and we have a really big mix of different visions. And I think you can see that, no? Uh, the, the different perspectives and our work is to decide the best uh, idea for the project. That's it. And normally our project has different layers of uh, strategies that work together. And maybe everyone is uh, responsible of one of that layer, you know? And the, you have the, the original or the, or, or the first perception of a project, but you can uh, discover different intentions if you can visit or, or analyze, you know? I think that is our goal you know, or our power. Four heads like a monster. <laughs> Under construction. Yeah. yeah, the structure. But I mean, already so much, so finished compared to the But the project is in the 50%. You're not 50%, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we need some. Yeah. yeah. But it's an organic uh, project that changes yeah. all the time. I think that that is the most uh, particularity of uh, the Mexican architectural scene. It's a real community. Uh, a lot of us are, are real friends or, or, or good colleagues, and uh, all of them support when we lost our office. Um, Francisco Pardo, you, you know him. He offered a, a place for one month to, to think what we will do. And in that moment, we were in a competition versus Pancho, Francisco Pardo, another two colleagues, and just only us lose, our, lose the office. And we finished that competition, the project, in a place uh, of, of Francisco, and we won the, the competition. You know, that you, you can see that uh, human quality of the community, and um, we, we can perceive all the time in, uh, in uh, Liga's activities. Liga is our exhibition place of uh, architectural, uh, um, of emerging architects from Latin America, and Liga is the Mexican community and the Latin American community, and you can see that when you are there. Um, 
Maybe in Argentina is not so strong that community, or, or, or in other places. I think, especially in Mexico, is that condition. I, I think that uh, when I uh, arrived to Mexico, I could perceive that, and uh, I, I don't knew anyone when I arrived 20 years ago to Mexico, and I have now really strong uh, friendship with a lot of uh, architects. That shows something. Thank you. Thank you for having me and to, to come here.